Our lesson today is entitled Daniel's Prayer and is found in Daniel chapter 9 verses 4 through 14. This is Sunday School lesson from March the 12th, 2023. My name is Tony Miller and a key verse for our lesson today is found in the ninth verse of the text and it reads as follows. To the Lord our God belongs mercies and forgiveness though we have rebelled against him again. Daniel's prayer is our subject. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to recognize human sinfulness and trust that God forgives us of our sins and call on God in times of great distress. Get this to my YouTube channel. I ask you please hit the subscribe button and notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically. Please like my lessons. If I give you any value at all, please like my lessons share my lessons, leave me comments, all of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. Amen. So there's a page that I've been sharing this year that describes me as the share of the word of God. I think that's an important that you understand the point of view of anyone who is, who is sharing and teaching this word. Uh, I believe that the Holy Spirit is a true teacher. Our lessons are all about the context and the content. Uh, 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 the, uh, their highly pictorial, significant background, and uh, now as of this point, we have over 350 videos that are in this archive. So you always have the ability to go back and review other subject matter that we have shared along this journey of our Christian life. Thank you so much. Amen. So each week, I prepare some measure of background. The second week, we are in this book of Daniel. And uh, obviously there will be some uh, measure of repetition as, uh, again, every lesson is a standalone. Uh, my lessons do have definitions, terms, theories, people, people, history, maps, and their places. It's kind of the subject structure of the way that I do share these lessons. I hope you enjoy this lesson. The Holy Spirit has given us something great to, to learn today about this whole concept of prayer as well as this story of God's prophet Daniel. Amen. So word, and one of the words here is this word iniquity. Iniquity signifies merely that of which wrong or the tendency to do wrong. Iniquity has this other part of it is that this, this uh, repeating and continually or this, uh, this uh, ability that you have premeditation. That's iniquity. When you're doing sin that is premeditated is this whole concept of iniquity. Amen. So here's another concept of prayer. Prayer, uh, typically, and again, if you want to have a, a, a prayer that has some measure of structure to it, then you should have begun it with adoration or acknowledgement of who God is. Praise the Lord, being awesome, that God is who he is, and, and confession. That, that, that don't go before Almighty God with sin in your heart. Confess Admit your sins and ask God's overflowing forgiveness and mercy in your life. And then you have this thing of, of thanksgiving. The thanksgiving that you're thankful for what he's done and what he's doing and what he may do in your life. Thank God for all the wonderful things that he has done. And then the supplication. That's our, our request that we take our, 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 our prayers and our, our supplications and our requests that we bring them to the foot of God. That's this whole act, the way, the acts of prayer. This is the model, one of the most significant models, the model I've always taught about praying, the model that I was taught as well, that this is the way, adore, confess, thanks, and request, or supplicate. Again, amen, will be dominant in my lesson today, amen. So we're in this period of kings and prophets and I'll share with you in the timeline of God's people. Amen. So in this whole timeline, I, I, I share with you this as many times as possible because I think it puts it in frames us to understand where we are in this lesson. That, that again, this people have now come through this exodus. After 400 years in Egypt that they would go through the exodus, they would go through the Red Sea on dry land and they would ultimately go into heading to a promised land that should have taken them only two weeks, but for 40 years they were in wilderness because of their sin. 
that this that God's people, 1.2 million people have, have left Egypt and now are wandering in the wilderness for 40 years and ultimately those who are the complainers, they, that's all they did in the wilderness, they complained about everything, but God would provide them with provisions for that 40 years and he would sustain them with quail and manna, but they would be constantly complaining. But ultimately God would allow them to go into that land that promised land, that land of milk and honey, that they would go in there. But God told them, and he gave them the requirements that said, when you go in this land that I want you to kill off everybody, kill out all those Canaanite people, and don't, and don't intermarry with those sea people, and don't embrace those gods. But that's not what they did. They did contrary to what God said, and they would ultimately go in the next period of Judges. In the period of judges that they would have, uh, there was sin and fall short of the, the requirements of God, and God would send them another judge and would do this over and over and over again for hundreds of years. And now we hit in the period where we are now, in the king, period of kings and prophets. And there we go, and there's the first king that God would choose, the first king being Saul, but the first king that, that, that God would choose would be David. And then his son Solomon, and under Solomon and, and Solomon's uh, um, uh, two proteges, his son, and the Jeroboam and Rehoboam will cause a division of God's kingdom. And then it will cause the calamities that would happen for this people. And Judah would remain and ultimately would go into a period where they would continue, God would constantly send them prophets and they would do contrary to the will of God. And ultimately God had made promises that, that they would be scattered and God would also promise that they would go into some measure of captivity of which, would, of which they would be 70 years. And they would go at the hands of the Babylonians, they're the fiercest army in the world. And God would send them prophets. Jeremiah would be the one of the last before they go in captivity. He would constantly tell the, every prophet that was gone to sent to turn back away from your sinful ways and come back to God. That is the message of every prophet that God would send. But ultimately at the hand of the Babylonians, his folks would go into captivity. And Daniel, the next prophet, on the scene would now be the one that we are studying today as his people are now in ca captivity at the hands of the Babylonians and those who succeed those dynasties. Amen. Let's move on. And then these prophets I share with you, these are listing of the prophets that God would send to his people. There are minor prophets and major prophets and minor prophets and some you know and some you do. You may not have studied as well. But there was Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. It's the subject of our lesson today. Amen. And again, when Moses would speak to this people, when they were telling them they were, when headed into this promised land, Moses said, I, I, just like Martin Luther King said, I've been to the mountaintop and I've seen the promised land, but I won't get there with you. Moses says the same, but he says that when you go into that 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 promised land, he says that he says what happened is that you need to make sure that you don't go into sin, and, and if not, God will scatter you if you serve those gods of those Canaanite people, those Baals and the Asherahs, and the and he says that his people don't not make any graven images or the likeness of anything. That God is a jealous God, that he wants praise that belongs to him only and not to some blocks of wood and stone and if you do evil in the sight of the Lord or, or don't pro Moses said don't provoke God to anger if you do this and he says that if you do it the Lord will shatter, scatter you from among all the nations and you shall be few in number among the heathen uh, whether the Lord will leave you and you shall serve those those gods the work of man's hand, hands those artisans would carve out blocks of wood and stone which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell, but you are serving those blocks of wood and stone. And, and, and God says that don't do it. And he told them over and over for hundreds of years that through the prophets that the result will be that this will be your doom. Amen. Let's move on. Under in Joshua. <clears throat> God had made a covenant with his people, and in that covenant he says that don't violate the covenant of your Lord, which he commands you, and go serve those gods or bow down to the, them or the Lord's anger will burn against you. And that land, that promised land that I just shared with you, that land with milk and honey, that land that God would promise to your, your ancestors, that God will quickly perish you from that land if you do thus and so. 
Amen. And they did thus and so. And oath me at the hands after the Solomon and after the divided kingdom, the north would follow after two golden calves in the north. And then, and then ultimately they would be scattered at the hands of the Babel as the, as the Syrians as God has promised. God is not a man that he should lie or a sinner needing a savior. That, yeah, that God promised them, God did exactly as he said, and the, as the northern tribes were, 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 were scattered into the hands of the Syrians. And then Judah would remain, and then and God would send them prophets, and they would have these kings. And the, and the, and the prophets would, would constantly say the same thing over and over, and turn back to God and turn from your wicked ways. Don't follow after those idols made of blocks of wood and stone. That, 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 and ultimately, Jeremiah would be one of the last that I shared with you, that he would tell these people to, to turn back to God. And he also the one who prophesied and said that, hey, that the Holy Spirit will leave this temple. The temple, the opulent temple that Solomon would make for his people, that he says that there's no way in the world that God's temple could be destroyed with his Shekinah glory in his presence. So ultimately the Holy Spirit would leave and then the, the world's fiercest army, the known world at that time, fiercest army, the Babylonians, that they would, 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 would come in and they would, 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 would wreak havoc upon the, the God's people. And, and, and Jeremiah would tell the people that don't provoke those Babylonians even more, and they did it anyway. And ultimately, they would be all gone into captivity for 70 years. And God would take out the best and the brightest, those, uh, those uh, in this first wave. And uh, some 10,000 people would go to the first wave, and there were multiple waves of, 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 of folks that would go into this Babylonian exile, traveling hundreds of miles and into, from Jerusalem into the Babylonian dynasty. Amen. Let's move on. And this book of Daniel begins with King Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler of Babylon, ransacking Jerusalem, as I share with you. And he ended up taking back the cream of the crop, like I said, 10,000 of the best and the brightest, most, the most elite and noble Israelites, to serve in his court in Babylon. And Daniel and his friends, and you know the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego to navigate between the demands of Nebuchadnezzar and putting up, putting their own religious principles. Again, remember they had religious holidays and, and feasts and, and, and they had the, the Sabbath and they had all of those other Sabbaths that they had to keep track of and, and they, they had dietary restrictions and all and, and, the, and, the, and the king wanted them to eat his food and they wanted to eat their own. And, the, and, the, and ultimately that because of this collision between these two societies and these two ways of living, that those four, those three Hebrew boys would ultimately be cast into a fiery furnace. You know the story. And we don't have time to discuss that at this moment, but you know the story. That ultimately they would be thrown into a lion's den and, and, and then they would, they would heat up the, 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 the furnace seven times hotter than normal. And even the men who threw them into the, into the den would perish because of the heat. But the next day what they would come and look in that they would not see three, but they would see four one looking like the son of man and there and he would take them out of the lion's den and, and there their, their clothes were not even uh, scorched. They got in ravines and the men were spared from the flames emerging unscathed. Again, the word of God for the people of God, Daniel 1 through 3. Amen, let's move on. For these four youths, God gave them knowledge and intelligence in every branch of uh, literature and wisdom. And Daniel even understood all kinds of visions and dreams. And as for every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king Nebuchadnezzar and his son bowed to Shazar and, 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 uh, and King Darius, that would be the three. Actually, there's more kings that are in between Belshazzar and Darius, but they were so insignificant, and they some only lasted a very short period of time, but these were three most, most significant. The, that they would consult these Hebrew boys, but most importantly, they would, they would, they would, they would consult with Daniel. And, then, and he found these young men, as well as Daniel, to be ten times better than the magicians and conjurers that they had in their realm. And thus they would use them, and Daniel would be one who would consult. They would consult when they would have dreams, just like Joe Belteshazzar, as I'll share with you in a bit as well. Let's move on. 
And Daniel was gifted to interpret the dreams and vision. In chapter 5, we see Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belteshazzar relating to the writings that he had on the wall that that he would that he was in, uh, he did some evil in the sight of God that when they destroyed Jerusalem they took the elements of the t of the of the uh, temple and they had them in the treasury of Babylon and he would take them out the bowls and the and the, and some of the other elements and they would have a party and they would be throwing a party using the elements the sacred elements of Almighty God and in 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 their party and, and, and he would see this writings on the wall and, and he, would in, he would ask Daniel to interpret this dream and a dream that Daniel would say that, that, that the, 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 the message is that you will die and not live. And, and then that would end Belshazzar's, Belshazzar's kingdom. And in chapter 6, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den by his new ruler, Darius the Mede. The Mede. And, and God chose to close the mouth of of these lions and he was unscathed and that what happened is that that, that that Daniel would pray three times a day that he was being obedient to the, the, the to Almighty God and and ultimately these men they they would they would manipulate the, the King Darius and they would cause the, him to to throw one his favorite this Daniel into the lion's den and uh, and ultimately that lion that he would uh, the next morning that he would he would go and, and he would look in. He says, Daniel, looking to see, was he okay? And he was unscathed as well. That God would close the mouth of the lions. And he was ultimately promoted uh, in the, the, the dynasty of King Darius. And, and those men who would uh, cause this uh, drama would be thrown into the lion's den along with their family members as well and eaten by those lions. Next one. So last week, leading up to chapter 7, we find Daniel recuperating after this draining night of that lion's den. And he was there all night, and the angel prevented the lions from eating him. And like I said, this King Darius was happy about that fact. And Daniel tossed and turned all evening with God-given dreams. And in this lesson, we learn the vision that we speak of, this, the ancient one being God. And, and sitting on a throne and ruling eternally and giving dominion and power to the Messiah. Jesus sitting on the right hand of Almighty God, the Father, the Ancient One, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit there present in eternity. Amen. Let's move on. Daniel's vision. Excuse me. My phone is ringing. And, uh, and uh, Daniel vision of change was chapter was name of our lesson that we had last week. And Daniel was still in exile in Babylon, Babylon, and he has uh, seen the torment of this world's fiercest army that would be Judah, uh, that they would defeat Judah. And then uh, ultimately he would see this captivity and rape and slavery and war and injustice and death and murder, right? And he's seen these three vicious kings, Nebuchadnezzar, again, I said, the fiercest army in the world, his son, Belshazzar, was evil as well, and even King Darius, that he would be defeat Babylon. So you know that he had to be, he had to be a worse king than Nebuchadnezzar, who was, the worst, who was the strongest army in the world, known world at that time. And Daniel's had favor, favor with all of them, because he had favor with God, and, and one of them almost killed him, which I share with you. But he is a prophet of Almighty God, and God has given him visions that relate to his present era, to Jesus' era, to our era, and the future of humanity. That's what we learn in this book of Daniel. God has cracked open the door to our future because of what, uh, because of that, because of the fact what Daniel shared with us, we have hope. And all the horrible issues that we face in our life and all that they faced as well is incomparable to our future, our future. Because our future is with God in eternity. That's what we learned last week in chapter 7. Amen. And the main thing that Daniel taught us in chapter 7 is defined by one word. That is hope. That there's always hope. That whatever the vicissitudes of our life, whatever the calamities, whatever the, the horribleness that we endure that we always have the ability to go back to our sin, our prayers, or our holy and righteous Father, and He will hear our prayers. will provide answers and solutions to our problems. That's what we find in this hope. Amen. Let's move on. And in chapter 8, chapter 8, it talks about these four kings, again, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, 
and then Darius, as I shared with you, Babylon and uh, and um, and uh, his son as well. And then we find this Darius, uh, the Medo Persian, the Persian empires. Again, there'll be two nations there, and then you find Greece. There'll be Alexander the Great. These are the four kings that Daniel will prophesy that will come into the scene, and then Rome being the one that would be the, the mighty kingdom, and then there will be future kingdoms. And then that Daniel's prophecies that I share with you that they'll be from the future as well. And it will speak to us about the ram and the and the uh, the ram and the goat and the horn. And it speaks to the that unholy trinity I shared with you last week, that the that Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet, and then the, the leaders that would be in cahoots with them, would be the four kingdoms of Daniel, and they will be the, the kingdom of the future as well. Like I said, he speaks to uh, that generation, to our generation as well, that, that these are the events that will happen in humanity. Daniel, Daniel's prophecy is most of the prophets would always have a, a message for their, themselves and a, and a far-reaching message maybe to the time of Christ and then the time for the end times as well. And that's what Daniel leaves for us. Amen. Let's move on. And that's our background. Uh, a lot of background. About 20 minutes. Let's jump into this lesson. Amen. So Daniel chapter 9, and, we'll, and I'll give you the first four verses. We have a lot to get to, but let's see if we can get through this lesson well about this prayer and, and about these new kings that I just shared with you. And then, and here in, 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 in Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 through 4, I'll use the Amplified as our backdrop. And in the, the first year of Darius, the son of Ashu, Asurus. Uh, the media, uh, medium descendant, again, the medial Persian, like I said, he made the king, he was made king of the realm of the Chaldeans, the Chaldeans of Babylon is the same in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, stood from the books of the numbers of the years in which, according to the word of the Lord, Jeremiah the prophet, must, pa must pass before the desolation which had been pronounced on Jerusalem would end. And it would be 70 years that, that, that Jeremiah would, would, would foretell about this, this period of time when they would be in this captivity would be 70 years, as well as Daniel would talk about the 70 weeks as well. And verse 3, and so I directed my attention to the Lord God to seek him by prayer and supplication and fasting and sackcloth and, all, and ashes and, and sackcloth and ashes was is always a um 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 a, a morning where where folks would would put on these uh this 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 cloth like looks like burlap but that was was uh was um uh, skins and 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 it would be and they would put on the black ashes uh, on their face as a as a symbolic of mourning and I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said oh Lord the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and extends his loving kindness towards those who love him and keep his commandments that's how we open up chapter 9 where we'll study today about this prayer of Daniel amen and again, our Sunday school lesson, we're talking about Daniel praying to Almighty God on behalf of his people. We find here in verses 4 through 14. I'll use the New Living as our backdrop as well. We begin here in verses 4 and 5. And again, as part of this, the prayer and the components of this prayer that is denoted here will be this admiration, or I said acknowledgement, or admiration, or confession that we would praise the Lord for being awesome and we would admit to our sins, right? <clears throat> And here Daniel says in verse 4, I prayed to the Lord my God and confess, Oh Lord, you are great and awesome God. That's the that adoration. That, that when we pray and we send our prayers up to God, we acknowledge that he is who he is. We don't send our prayers to any old Buddha, Muhammad, whoever. We send it to Almighty God, the Lord, that you are awesome. And you will always fulfill your covenant, covenant and keep your promise of unfailing love to those who love and obey your commands. But, 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 but God, that we, we know who you are, but, 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 but we have sinned and, and done wrong and, and we have rebelled against you and have scorned your commands and regulations. That's what Daniel says as he opens up this prayer to God on his people. It's acknowledging who God is and he's confessing the sins that his people has perpetrated against Almighty God. We have sinned and done wrong. 
rebelled against you and have scorned your commands and regulations. And that's why I shared with you in the beginning to give you the point of view is what he is saying that would happen, that they would go into this promised land, that they would follow after those idols, and for hundreds of years that they would they would embrace the bells and the asherahs of the, the Canaanite gods, and they would do evil in the sight of God, and God would still continually bless them, and they thought they were cool with God because the God was constantly blessing them, but it now is time for payment for those sins and Daniel this people are now being captivity and all the horribleness that I share with you the the evil that Daniel saw at the sight in the sight of these leaders that now has all been perpetrated on behalf of this people but they have not turned back to God as a as the prophet Jeremiah would ask and as Daniel as well and they have sinned and done wrong against Almighty God amen let's move on and here we find in verse 6 of our text, Daniel's prayer. And, and again, he's had this confession as part of this, this, uh, this acts of prayer. And again, he says that we have refused to listen to your servants and prophets. All those who come before, those minor prophets and major prophets I share with you, that they would speak almost in unison to the same story, who spoke on your authority to our kings and our princes and ancestors. <clears throat> And, and Daniel has here that he doesn't just say that, oh, it's just the leaders who did wrong. No, he says unto all the people of the land that they were not listening as well, not just the leaders. You can't just blame the leaders. You've got to blame all the people of the land. You cannot blame, I cannot blame your, your parents for what you did and, your, and the sins of your life and how you, you were a part of that same sin as well in the confession. You need to and admit your sins and ask God's overflowing forgiveness and mercy in your life. That's what we're learning here from this prayer of Daniel. Amen. Did I share with you those prophets? They were the representatives of God, that God would constantly send people in your life as well, and they were the one who would send a message to you to turn from your wicked ways, that God is sending the message to you. You must listen and turn back to him. Amen. Let's move on. Again, this confession continues that Daniel would say that he would, uh, in this uh, prayer that he have in verses 7 and 8, and to you, O oh Lord, belongs righteousness. That's, that's moral perfection, right? That we should not, we should live according to the the law, they had 613 laws that they had. They had all these laws. They had the 10, and they just kept adding to it. But to us, open shame, as at this day. To the men of Judah, again the share that I that 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 the Assyrians were already in 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 captivity, but now that are they've been scattered, but now the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, who had already gone on in Israel, right, and all those who are near and those who are far away, scattered now, in all the lands which you have driven them because of the treachery that they have committed against you, verse eight, to us, O Lord, belongs open shame, right. To our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. And I guess we can all say this in our own lives, right? That, that we have family members that are in sinful conditions as well as people. Uh, and, and, and we are always moving contrary to God. I think one of the things I share with you in this confession that Daniel has here, that when we sin, that God remains in the same place. That we're the one to walk away from God. God is still in the same spot. And he asks us to come back to him. Not we, not he come to us. And he, for hundreds and hundreds of years, that he had been giving them mercy. But now it's time to pay the piper. And now Daniel is sending this prayer to God. Confessing that his people have sinned horribly against Almighty God. Amen. Let's move on. I share with you this again, that he says to those who are far away, to Israel, the normal, northern, and the scattered among the people, and then those now scattered in the, in the uh, dynasty of the Babylonians and the Persians and those who would succeed. Amen. Let's move on. This is Daniel's prayer and his prayer of thanksgiving. But the Lord, our God, is merciful and forgiving. That, that we're thankful for that. And I think that we as well in, in our lives that, that we, when we sin and fall short of the glory of God, 
that we always know that God is merciful, and that, that he is forgiving. And even though we have rebelled against him, verse 10, we have not obeyed the Lord our God, for we have not followed the instructions he gave us through his servants and prophets and preachers and teachers and all those who would share this word. And all Israel has disobeyed your instructions and turned away, refusing to listen to your voice as I share with you the northern scattered into the Syrian dynasty. So now the solemn curses and judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured down on us, Judah, because of our sin. This is prayer of thanksgiving as well as that prayer of confession of sin as well. Amen. Let's move on. In verse 12 of our text, this is Daniel's praying to God on behalf of his people. And he says, Lord, you have kept your word and done to us as rulers exactly as you warned, right? Never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. And sometimes we worry about what we want. We wonder about why that we are in this uh, problems that we have in our life because God has warned us. People have come and warned us along the way sent people to warn us about the circumstance that we're living in and here he told these people and under joshua he says if you violate this covenant of the lord which i've commanded you and you go and you serve other gods and bow down to them to them the lord's anger will burn against you and you will quickly perish from this good land this land of milk and honey that he has given to you don't violate the common com uh, the covenant but he says you've kept your word god and done exactly as you warned. Verse 12 of our text. Amen. And verses 13 and 14 of our printed text. You know, this is a prayer that Daniel would submit to God. And I guess that this is where learning about how to pray and, and, and ultimately the, the, the results of the calamities of our life that we need to make sure we send our word to God to help change these conditions. Verse 20. Verse 13 of the text. And every curse written against us in the law of Moses has come to come true. That we are sinners and we're against God. We've done all these things. We 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 you told us that don't don't uh don't um embrace those gods, don't marry those folks, don't don't uh don't worship those blocks of wood and stone, but we've done it anyway. Daniel's in this prayer. And yet we have refused to seek your mercy from mercy from the Lord your God by turning from our sins and recognizing his truth that we didn't even know we didn't even acknowledge that God is there that that again like I said we walked away and then God is there and all we have to do is come back to him and ask and that's what Daniel was saying in his prayer and he's trying to again the prayer is to for them and for us as well therefore the Lord has brought us the disaster he prepared again I share with you that he took this this army the the world's fiercest army and and, and took them into captivity and and, and 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 raped those women and 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 put those people into bondage and slavery and 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 it would cause all the calamities of their life the lord our god is right to do all the things for we did not obey him and again we fall into sin we can't blame god we know the word we're taught the word from our youth this ends the part of our printed text. Let's move on to close. Amen. Daniel was an intercessor. That, that, that we often in our lives, we need, if we don't do it ourselves, then we need to have praying mamas and grandmothers and sisters and brothers and, and friends and family members and, and pastors and teachers and those who are in our life. That who, those will stand in the gap before me interceding on behalf of our wicked nation, our wicked people. So that God may show mercy instead of wrath. But Daniel in this prayer today is a prayer of intercession. That these people did not turn back to God. So, but Daniel is now again these seventy years that they are now going to be in this captivity, and they would have the evilness of these fierce armies that would put them into bondage, right? That would scatter these people and assimilate them into their societies. Uh, but, but again, that they they they're a wicked nation. Uh, that that you, we need intercessors. We need to be intercessors as 
well. Amen. To those in our life that are not going the right direction. And we need to intercede just like Daniel is interceding on behalf of these folks as well. Amen. With all this disaster that's come upon Judah, they have not made the prayer before the Lord our God to help their condition. That that he, that even when you get into the worst, that you 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 like the you fall into the pig pen that we had before in another lesson, that uh, that, uh, that 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 you can fall into the worst circumstances. That sometimes we need to make our prayers before the Lord our God to help out our condition. And Daniel has confessed his sin. He confessed the sin of Israel. His prayer remembers the sins of the prayerlessness of this people. And we know people in our lives that don't even send the prayers, and that's why we have to be the intercessor, right? The, that when we, when they face trials and calamity, Israel still did not make their prayers before the Lord, who is our present help in the time of trouble. And I think I stopped by to share with you that when you fall in diverse troubles, that you need to go and 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 send your hand up to God, and God is 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 gracious and merciful that he would hear your prayers and answer that he's not going to just always intervene on behalf of you and stop the train from hitting you that sometime you need to pray to God and he will intervene on your behalf let's move on amen I'm going to share with you that these acts of prayer that, that we have a model to, to praise the Lord for being awesome <laughs> confess our sins <clears throat> and ask for God's overflowing forgiveness and mercy in our life be thankful for God for all the things he's done and all that he will do and bring the requests for God to God for ourselves and for others that is his acts of prayers that we've learned today that this is how you should model your prayers when you're speaking to almighty God Amen. Let's move on to close. Amen. The message contained in this lesson tells us that when we face the trials and difficulties or difficulties or judgments because of our disobedience to sin, that it should drive us immediately to prayer if we are mature and wise that Almighty God is merciful and forgiving. And when we are in these calamities, it should be a wake-up call to the coldness of our hearts. God is here to help our condition if we ask. So pray or be the intercessor for someone in need, just like Daniel. And that is our Sunday school lesson this week. My prayer is something you've learned this week, strengthen your faith. The Lord provides all your needs. You learn something worthy of sharing. In the master's name of Jesus, we do pray and ask these things always. In his name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for your time. Amen.